Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today is an exciting day. I'm putting together my Socotra Island landscape. Socotra Island has some of the most beautiful and unique landscapes on the planet Earth. Let's have a look at some images now of Socotra Island and I'll show you what I mean. And this is my inspiration for this Penjing or bonsai landscape. Socotra Island is known for the beautiful and large adeniums that grow there naturally and they also have the dragon's blood tree which is a very unique looking tree and I'm hoping to recreate those today using jade plants. On the bench over here I put together all the materials I hope I need for this landscape. So I've got my pot, I've got the adeniums here starting with my largest over here going down in size so I tried to pick out a variety of sizes and styles, ones that reminded me of Socotra Island. There's my smallest one here. I've got my photographers that Adrian sent me. They look cool. I've got a collection of rocks. Now I can get more rocks. Uh, this is just a few of them. I'll probably need more. And then over here I've got these jades. These are the uh, you know, they call them the bonsai jade or the pine jade. And the leaves remind me of the dragon trees. And I think, I think I can prune them up and eventually get that kind of dragon tree style with these plants. I was thinking a lot, you know, how I could recreate those dragon trees. And I think this is the best option, these jades, because you can get quite a canopy on them and I can get nice branching and they'll get bark on the trunks. They should look pretty convincing as a dragon tree. I looked at all the reference pictures I could find of Socotra Island to give me inspiration and ideas for my Penjing landscape that I'll be creating today. And I'm leaning towards a coastal landscape where I have a bit of a shoreline and then kind of rising up and then the rocks start maybe to a hill. So sort of like steps up to a higher ground. And yeah, I, I think that'll look pretty good and I think it's representative of Socotra Island. I think it's a good slice of the landscape. And the reason I, I, I'm attracted to that shoreline idea is that it, it when I see pictures of adeniums growing near the shoreline, it just looks so strange, these, you know, dry desert plants right beside water. It's just a a strange combination that fascinates me. So that's what I'm going to try for. I'm not sure how it'll turn out today, but let's let's get into it and you know give it a try. I'm going to start with a rough layout of the trees in the pot. I've never tried the trees out in the pot before, so I'll just kind of place them around, get an idea of um, you know how many trees I can fit in here without it looking too crowded. And I want my smaller ones going towards the back of the planting to create forced perspective. You know, something like this maybe. 
I'm having a look at the landscape from the front and my initial impression is that it's too crowded. I've got too many trees in there. I think taking out three or four would definitely help. Spacing them out a little more. The hard part of this landscape is going to be keeping these adeniums small. So I'll have to be very, very careful with the watering that I don't give them too much water, otherwise they'll just grow like crazy. So I've got to really be sparing on my water and uh, try and keep them as small as possible. That'll be a challenge. I'm going to try, instead of reducing the number of trees, I'm going to try maybe putting some in clumps because you see that on Socotra Island. You see sort of clumps of the adeniums together. One there, maybe one up here. I think that maybe looks better. Um, it kind of keeps a little more space between them all, which is more, more like the photographs of Socotra Island. The adeniums are kind of spaced apart from each other. So, yeah, we'll see in the final composition, but uh, I think something like this is looking good. I'm going to fill up the bonsai pot with bonsai soil, kind of get it leveled off, and then I'll try placing a few of the trees in the landscape. Let's see how it looks. I'm going to do all my soil work outside here because it gets quite dusty in the greenhouse if you're pouring soil on that. So it's fairly warm out today. So I'll fill that up with bonsai soil now. All right, here I go. I'll use the big soil scoop for the initial filling. Then I'll use my smaller scoop for the more detailed work. My next step, I'm going to lay out the coastline. So I just want to show a little bit of where the water would be, maybe a little inlet here. And I'm just going to use playground sand and I might add white sand to kind of represent waves or foam or something later on. But for today, I'm just going to lay it out with the playground sand. Down here on my larch forest, I have a similar feature. So I have a little mountain stream that comes down here into a floodplain. And you can see I have the sand kind of going off the edge of the pot over here. And it looks quite nice, I think. It's asymmetrical. It uh, really defines, you know, the water land of a water land penging. So I think I'll do a similar thing with the Socotra Island landscape. All right, here I go. So I'm going to want my water to kind of wrap around. Maybe a little bit of an inlet here too, I think. I think that'll look nice. It'll be very similar to the large forest, I think, in the end. Because that kind of has an inlet where the river would be. Or, a, you know, a, an indentation there. So I want to run it kind of around here. And maybe not too far this way, but definitely more in here. Something like that, I think. Next, I'll come in with a spoon, just kind of level it off. Next, I'm going to start placing some rocks and I might have some near the shoreline and then kind of building up a, a sort of a hill. So some desert roses will be up on a hill and some will be down lower near the, the water line. I'm just trying out some rocks now. So I've got kind of, Maybe a, you know, a coastline here. And maybe my taller rocks, you know, fill that with soil and then higher soil behind here. Sort of like a stepped hill. Got to kind of keep in mind my landscape here. Um, I think I'm going to need more rocks than what I've picked out. So let's go outside and collect some more rocks from my skid of rocks out there. Underneath all this snow and ice is my rock collection, so I'll have to get out the shovel and get rid of all the ice and snow.
All right, I'll try and peel back the cover now. There we go. There's all the rocks. Wow. A lot of rocks here. Now there's a nice frozen one here. There. This one is quite nice. It's not too high. It kind of looks like a coastline. It might be a nice one. This one and this one. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's uh, take these rocks inside, thaw them out, and try them out in the landscape. I went to put the snow shovel back, and around the front of the house, I noticed I had a delivery from Tom from Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors. He's always sending me presents and spoiling me. And today, he has sent me from the Ironwood Tool Company a diamond tool sharpener. So it's really nice. It's got a flat side with 600 grit and then a rounded side with 400 grit. So I'll show you that up close. Here's a close up of the tool sharpener. So it's got all these little diamonds infused in the blade so you can sharpen your tools. It'll be really nice to have. Thanks very much, Tom. Another awesome tool for my bonsai toolkit. I've let the rocks warm up now, so I'm going to try a few of them out. I'm going to start with the biggest one, which I think is probably too big, but we will see. So maybe here. I don't know about that one. I think if I did use it in the landscape, it would have to be towards the back. More like something like that. And then the smaller rock would have to be sort of, sort of <laughs> somewhere. It's kind of got a straight section here. If you look at it from the top view, which you know, it's interesting, but it's maybe not the most attractive in the world. I gotta see how much this weighs too. It's reasonable. I've got a lot of rocks and a lot of different combinations. I'm going to play around with it and then we'll come back and see what I've decided upon, if anything. I was playing around with some of the heavier rocks and this is what it looks like. It looks kind of like a coast, a rocky coast. And I think it's too heavy with the rocks. There's no space to plant the trees. You know, I might be able to plant some little ones like that and they would look fine, but I think it's too, too heavy with the rocks. So I, I think I'm going to not use, definitely not use that giant rock at the back. I think it, it's a beautiful rock and it, it could make a landscape by itself. But yeah, I think I need to go smaller. I've got an arrangement that I like now. Let's have a look at it. It's a little more subtle. Now it looks nice just the rocks by themselves. I like the arrangement, but I've got to remember I have to put trees in here. So I'm going to try my largest tree here, this one. And if it's too big, you know, if it just looks too big for the landscape, I'll not use it. I can always create another landscape with that tree. So it's going to be a bit of playing around again with the trees to try and, you know, find something that looks, uh, in scale and proportion, something that looks like Socotra Island. I'm going to have to get the tree out of the pot, bare root it. I'm not going to do any root pruning because, you know, if you root prune these desert roses, you've got to let the cuts dry out for at least a week till they kind of go dry and then you can plant them. Otherwise, it'll just rot up the trunk and kill the tree. So I don't know what the roots will be like on this. I I hope they're shallow enough that I can fit them in here. And I will be adding more soil to the landscape. So let's get this tree out of the pot and get it bare rooted. When you're working with the deniums, it's a good idea to wear rubber gloves because the sap is very poisonous. These gloves were also sent to me by Tom. So thanks, Tom. All right, the gloves are on. I can start the work. So I'll pull the tree out of the pot first.
trying not to make a mess. Sorry. And I'll use my root break, start combing away the soil. In the pictures of Socotra Island, I noticed that, you know, the, the roots on the adenium, you know, they're not perfect radial roots. They kind of wind between rocks and things like that. So kind of anything goes, it'll look very natural if I just kind of leave the root system alone. All these adeniums came from tropical expressions. They have quite a variety of sizes, which is really nice. You know, big ones down to miniature ones. And the roots look good and healthy, which is nice to see. There's no rot or anything. Wow, so that, that's what the tree looks like. It, it's quite an interesting looking tree. Let's place it in the landscape, see what it looks like. Now that's sitting a little high, but that's what it would look like in the landscape. It would be quite a large tree. I don't think it's necessarily too large a tree. It's kind of nice to have a focus, but let me just try another one. See what that would look like. You know, here's my Here's my next largest tree. Let's just take that out. Let's see what this one would look like. That looks fine too. Tough decision. My thoughts are to go with the big one, try it out, and in the end, if I don't like it, I'll take it out. I, I, think, I think this one, you know, it looks good, but I think it needs a main focus tree. All the other trees are kind of, they're not similar, but they're kind of, they don't jump in size at all. They're all kind of close to each other, which uh, might look all right, but I think we need a central focus tree. And I think this is the one. So I'm gonna dig out a hole here and plant the tree and see what it looks like kind of at depth. And I do like this as the front, it's kind of, Interesting with the way the branch arches over. Okay, so that is sitting on the bottom of the pot now, which is about where I'd want it. And I would want to twist it. Yeah, maybe there. Yeah, I, I think that's looking okay. I, I think that's quite fine. I mean, ideally I'd like the tree a little lower, but you know, I was going to build this landscape up a bit anyway, so I will definitely do that. So this is my next largest tree, and I'm just trying to think where I would want that. I could put it behind. No, that's too crowded. Maybe I need the next largest ones over here. This one and this one. I'm also thinking Maybe this largest tree has got to come forward more. So then I have more room for perspective. I, I think that's what I've got to do. So I'm going to move these rocks kind of closer up here. Maybe like something like that. And then I can move this tree forward more. Yeah, I think that gives me more room for perspective. I think that's a better place for that main tree and it, it's in a nice, it's got room to grow there a bit. It doesn't look crowded in the corner of the pot or anything. So um, I would need another tree kind of behind it here. And I'm trying to think what size. I would think I'd want sort of an intermediate size tree. Maybe an interesting one like this back here. No. That looks too big. Maybe this little one. That looks better. I don't know about that style. Thinking maybe one more like that. Yeah. Okay, let's try this one. I can tell this one needs water because it looks really healthy, but the trunk is a little hollow sounding. So it could definitely use some water. Speaking of water, I was looking at Socotra Island 
and I was checking out the climate there. I'll show you some graphs of the climate on Socotra Island, and that's a good indication of what kind of conditions are ideal for these type of trees to grow or plants. Just kind of comb out the roots a bit, try and tease them out a bit so they're not kind of winding around the bottom of the pot. That should be good there. And this one I was going to plant in back here. I'm going to try and move this rock back a little more. Give me a little more room to plant. I think somewhere about there. Looks good. Yeah, I think that looks nice there. I'm happy with that. Now, let's uh, go on. So I need... I need some medium sized trees here to kind of balance the weight of this and maybe not both of these, maybe just the one like here. Again, maybe bring these rocks forward a bit, less plants or less water and more land maybe. Planted just behind this one a bit, sort of maybe there. I think that'll look good there. I'm going to plant that one now. Okay, let's get this planted in here. I'm, all, I'm planting them all on the bottom of the pot. I figure I want them as deep as possible. Now, I better rotate that around so I get a good front. I think somewhere about there. This is sort of my biggest tree on this side, so I need to kind of taper them back, smaller ones to the back. So I'm going to plant my very smallest one and it'll go like as far back as I can get it. I may even have to rearrange the rocks a bit to get it back further, you know, back maybe here. Yeah, I think that'll look good. I think it'll look good back there. So I'll get this one. I'll rake out all the soil. This one feels like it could use a little water too. Now these are just starting to break dormancy, these trees. So, you know, it's a good idea to keep them dry when they have no leaves. Don't water them at all throughout the whole winter. And then when you see leaves coming, you can slowly start to increase the water. Bit of misting. And then when they get more leaves, maybe it's first full watering. Okay, so this tree is going to go way back here in the composition. And I don't want it behind this tree, so I've got to maybe move that over a bit. And I kind of like these trees, but you know, by the rocks, because that seems to be how they grow in Socotra Island. They, they seem to grow right in amongst the rocks. Let me have a look at that. I think that looks nice back there. Looks really good, in fact. I wonder if I could move it back just a bit more. Get more perspective, more depth to the planting. So that's the smallest tree in place now. So now I've got to get a few more trees in here. I'm looking around for another small one. This is my next smallest one. So I'll work on that one next. Kind of positioning it somewhere in the planting. I think that's a fine looking front right there. Okay, fill that in. It's starting to look like Socotra Island. Now, I've got three trees left and I have to decide do I need to plant three more trees. I've got to really decide here. I was also going to plant some dragon trees. These jades as dragon trees, so... I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting too crowded to do that. Like I'm thinking this composition is looking quite nice just the way it is. I don't think I need any more trees in here. Yeah, they look, they look spaced pretty, pretty nicely. 
just making a few adjustments here. I'm looking at the landscape and I, I think it's nicely balanced. I have the right amount of trees, the right amount of rocks, the right amount of kind of shoreline. I, I really like it. So I think what I should do, I've got three more desert rose trees and I've got those two jades that I want to train as dragon trees. I think I need to make a second landscape using all those trees. Here's a look at the three trees I have left over, my three desert rows, all nice, and then the jades back here. So I think a second landscape will look good. And maybe I can use, you know, maybe that big rock down here and just have the big rock, three trees, and my eventual dragon trees here, my dragon's blood trees. I think that'd be good. So here's this landscape. It really looks like those photos to me. I think it looks quite nice. So I'm going to clean it up. I, I still have to kind of plant this one, put some soil around it, fix everything up. So I'll work away at that. Now these rocks, you can see how they're deeper in the soil now. You can always pull them up if you want more of the rock showing, or if you want less rock, you can bury them more. Because rocks can be a little overpowering sometimes. If you see the whole rock, sometimes you just want to see a little bit of it. And it looks just right. All right, I'm going to clean up here, and then I'll start working on the, uh, the surface of the soil, getting that finished. Picking out all my pine bark particles, and then putting a fine kind of gravel down that kind of finishes the uh, the landscape off gives it a finished look and a more of a scale appearance like Socotra Island. I needed to get my aquarium gravel from the poly house but the door wouldn't open it was all iced over so I had to get out a crowbar and chip away all the ice shovel the snow away finally I could open the door just enough that I could squeeze in there and I got my aquarium gravel that I'm going to use as a ground cover for my planting. All right, let's keep going here. Now I've got to decide if I'm going to water this planting or not. I noticed, you know, some of those desert roses were a little too dry and could use some water. So I could water it now, tip the pot up, try and drain it the best I can, and then you know, keep it warm in the plant room and hopefully the trees will kind of, you know, they won't rot or anything. I don't think they will because a lot of them have the leaves coming out now. I think I will water the planting while I have it here in the greenhouse and it's nice and warm in here. I'll make sure it's drained really well before I bring it back into the plant room. And we'll see how they do. Hopefully they'll plump up a bit. Some of those ones that were looking a little, little on the dry side. The bigger ones, they can go the whole winter without watering, but some of the smaller ones need a bit of water. That's what I've read anyway, that um, they don't have enough water stored in the trunk to kind of get them through the whole winter without watering. But the larger ones definitely can. All right, here I go with the water. And this is rainwater. It's nice and warm from being in the greenhouse here. I've had the heat off in the greenhouse for the entire day and it is room temperature in here. And it's not a very sunny day. It's quite cloudy out. Kind of washing my rocks off too at the same time. So these are the rocks that uh, Connor, Stefan, and I collected. They're beautiful rocks. <clears throat> Might have to go on another rock collection trip this uh, summer. That was really fun. It was nice seeing Stefan's trees and meeting them and collecting rocks together. Well, working away down here, picking out this perlite, it sure feels like I'm on Socotra Island. It really gives me that 
that feeling. It looks like a very cool miniature world, a very unique world. The work on the Socotra Island landscape is all finished for today. Let's go in and have a look at it. I really had fun creating my Socotra Island bonsai landscape or penjing. It really gives me the feeling of being there on the island looking at the adeniums growing. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>